Hi, it's Sally here, and welcome to the second lesson in this series. In the last one, and following from the first series, I explain that I'm going to expand on the information there and take a look at report creation in Sage Intelligence Reporting. More specifically, in these first three videos, I'll be diving deeper into the Financial Report Designer, with my goal being to demonstrate its features and how they can be used to create a financial dashboard. In the last video, I used the Layout Generator to create a layout showing my balance sheet accounts grouped in a way that would allow me to create a number of financial ratios. Towards the end, I explained that because of the way I created it, it wasn't very dynamic and wouldn't show current data each time I ran out the report. I'm now going to pick up where I left off and show you how to make the necessary changes so that the latest information is always shown. After that, I'll begin with my second layout. Both of these activities will exhibit the use of the task pane. Since the last video, I saved my workbook back to the report in the Report Manager and have run it out again. The difference now is that I'm in period 5, whereas last time I was in period 4. If I unhide the period row again, you can see it still shows the old values, and this means that the layout is still showing old data. Editing it to ensure that it's always up to date is actually quite easy. The Formulas tab in the Task Pane lists the Sage Intelligence formulas that are provided for your product. Depending on your Sage product and version, these may vary slightly compared to mine. Included, however, will be Current Period. As the name suggests, it returns the fiscal period you are currently in, or in some products, the period value you select when your report is run out. I'm going to replace the static values above my column headings with it, and as I drag it in, you can see they update from 4 to 5. The formulas work by accepting a number of arguments, similar to Excel functions. These arguments, however, act as filters on the underlying data in the report to return the correct results. Once one has been added to a worksheet, you can edit it by typing in the formula bar in its cell or by using the function arguments window. Using current period ensures that every time I run out my report, the fiscal period that I'm in will be returned. And since the other financial formulas in my layout are linked to it, the latest data will be shown as well. Since this layout only includes current period figures, one other change I can make to streamline it is instead of using two period values, one above each column, I can just create a single report heading for them. I'm going to do this, and so we'll add a new row below the existing headings. I'll enter the title period and drag the current period formula into the adjacent cell. The formulas for my data are still referencing the old cells, so I need to update them to link to the new heading. I'm going to do this using the Function Arguments window. The cell for my current period is not going to change, so after selecting it, I'm going to press the F4 key on my keyboard to absolute reference it. You'll notice that all the other arguments have also been absolute or relative referenced in one way or another. For values in static positions like year, period, and company, both the column and row have been locked. And for those that are listed in a column, like the account argument, the column has been locked, whereas the row has been relative referenced. This is one of the conveniences provided by the layout generator and is important because it makes updating all the formulas in the layout a breeze. You see, I only have to edit the first one in each column, and once finished, I can copy them down to the other rows. Because of the correct referencing, each one will link to the correct arguments and so return the right results. As I do so, though, what you'll see is that the values in my credit rows change from positive to negative. In the last lesson, I explained that the sign for these rows was switched by including a minus in the formulas. Now, because the formulas in the row I copied down don't have a minus, the ones in these rows have been overwritten. This is easy to fix. All I have to do is add the minus sign again. I also only need to add it to my first credit row and then copy the formulas down to the rest of them. I can now delete the period values above each column. Another advantage of using only a single period instance is that if I want to report on a period other than my current one, 
I can just enter the value for it once in my report headings and the data in the layout will be updated accordingly. I'm going to undo this as I want to keep things current. The last change I want to make is edit my column labels. You can see that they still show the original period value and this is because they are static text. I'm going to use Excel functionality to combine the first part of the existing string with a value in my period heading. Using quotes identifies the first part as a string and I can then join it to the value in the cell using the ampersand symbol. This way, no matter what the period value is, the labels will display the correct information. All the changes I want to make are now done and we can move on to the next layout. The one I'm going to create will show my actuals for all 12 reporting periods in the current year for my revenue and cost of sales accounts. I'm also going to include a gross profit calculation for each period. Although it is quite simplistic, it will serve as the basis for my chart to track these values as well as allow me to demonstrate how the task pane is used to build a layout. When designing a layout using the task pane, a basic process is usually followed. This includes entering report headings, defining the set of accounts or account classifications you want to report on, adding the column labels for the data fields you want to include, dragging in the appropriate formulas and wiring them up, and lastly, creating any calculations that are needed. I'm going to stick with these steps, but like with editing the previous layout, you'll see that as I work through them, a number of efficiencies can be gained. Since this is a new layout, I'm going to start with a fresh sheet. For the report headings, I'm going to include my company and fiscal year and type the labels directly into the cells near the top of it. For the company value, I'm going to type in my company code, which is Sally's Necessities. And for the year, I'm going to use the current year formula from the task pane. Remember that these headings don't just serve as high level information about the layout, but are what the other financial formulas in it will reference to return the correct data. Using the correct year formula will also ensure that each time I run out the report, my current year's data is shown. But like with the previous layout, if I want to report on a previous year, so long as I have the corresponding data in my workbook, I can just type the year into the year heading and the information in the layout will be updated accordingly. The next step is to define the accounts or account classifications I want to report on. To do this, you use the Lists tab. If you were wanting to report at an account level, then you would make use of the Accounts list, drag it into the worksheet, and edit it to suit your needs. I'm, however, interested in showing my total revenue and cost of sales. For me, these items are included in my account categories, groups, and types lists, so I could use any of them. Account categories is the smallest, so I'm going to use it as it will require less editing. The category codes will be referenced by my financial formulas, and I'd like to include the descriptions as well, so I'm going to leave both columns in place. As for the rows, I only need the ones for revenue and cost of sales, so I'm going to delete the others. I have now finished defining my account classifications and can move on to the column headings. Although I want to show actuals for all 12 reporting periods, I'm only going to work on the first field. You'll see a bit later that by using Excel autofill functionality again, the job of adding the others is made easy. I'm going to type in actual 01 to the right of my account categories in line with the other headings. In the cell above, I'm going to enter the value 1. This will be used as the period value for the formulas in this column. In this case, I can't use a single period value in my report headings because I'm reporting on multiple periods. I can now add my formulas. I'm going to drag in Actual from the Formulas tab. I also only need to add the 1 as I'm going to set it up so that I can copy it down to the Cost of Sales row below. I need to edit its arguments and I'm going to use the Function Arguments window again for this. I'm going to start with the Year and Period. You can see that these fields already include the current year and current period formulas. I want them to work off the values in the headings though, so I'm going to replace them. I have absolute referenced the year as it is a static cell. 
for the period however i have absolute referenced the row and left the column relative referenced this is because when i expand the column to the right for the rest of my periods the row will stay the same whereas the column index needs to change relative to the position the formula is in i'm also going to include my company code for the company argument this isn't necessary if you're only ever going to work with one company if you're going to work with more than one company however then you'll want your data to be able to change based on the company you run your report out for and enter in your report headings something to note is that the arguments included for your formulas and those that are mandatory to complete in order to return the correct data will be specific to your sage product for example if you work with multiple currencies then an argument will likely be included for you to filter by your currency codes I also need to tell a formula which accounts I want it to return data for. If I was reporting on individual accounts, then I'd use the account argument, which in my case is called glink. Since I'm reporting on my categories, however, I need to use the account category code argument and link it to the codes from my list. For the revenue row, this is R. Like in the previous layout, I'm going to lock only the column reference so that my row is free to change. If you still feel a bit shaky about absolute and relative referencing in Excel, why not do a quick Google search on it? My formula is now wired up and I can close the function arguments window. I'm going to copy it down to the row below it. As I do so, you can see that my revenue is showing as a negative value and my cost of sales is showing as a positive value. As I'm sure you have guessed, this is because revenue is a credit account type and the sign needs to be switched for it. I'm going to do this again by adding a minus to the formula. The next thing I want to do is add my gross profit calculation. I'm going to start by entering a title for it in the description column. Gross profit is equal to revenue less cost of sales. And I can add this as a simple Excel formula at the bottom of my actual O1 field. The three totals for my first period are now complete. I can now demonstrate the convenience of creating layouts in Excel. If I select all the items in my actual O1 column and then use the autofill handle to copy the column to the right, you'll see that everything updates accordingly. I can carry on going to include all 12 periods. My layout is now complete and is in a format conducive to the chart I'm going to add to track these values. You'll have to wait for the next lesson though. At this point, I could use my Excel formatting skills to make it look a bit nicer, but since I'm more interested in using it for my dashboard, I'm not going to worry about this now. Before closing off, there's one last thing I want to mention. You may have already picked up that when creating report designer layouts, you aren't limited to using the layout generator or task pane on their own. There are times where it makes sense to use them together. As I showed with my first layout, although I created it using the generator, I use the task pane to customize it. Also, if you prefer working with the task pane but have a common set of rows that you use often, why not add them as a row set? They will then be saved with your report and available for you to reuse. And once generated, you can continue with your design using task pane functionality. In this lesson, I've shown how to use the easy to access lists and formulas in the task pane, as well as the familiar and convenient functionality of Excel to customize existing layouts or create ones of your own to suit your needs. I gave the suggested process to follow when designing your own, as well as touched on how the layout generator and task pane can be used to complement each other. In the next lesson, I'm going to put the work we've done so far to good use, as well as draw on some of the information from the first series to create my financial dashboard. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I look forward to seeing you there.